please welcome Teresa Lanowitz. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the AT&T Secure Connections Conference, and thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Teresa Lanowitz, and I'm head of cybersecurity evangelism and thought leadership with AT&T Business. And each year, one of the things my team and I get to do is we publish this annual research report, the AT&T Cybersecurity Insights Report. We've been doing this for nearly a decade now, and today we're going to spend some time and delve into a lot of the data that we've uncovered in our 2023 report. Report. So what are, what are we going to talk about today? We'll take a look at what edge computing means for the purposes of this report, for the purposes of this discussion. We'll take a look at some of the key findings that we found in our 2023 research and then follow up with some of the key takeaways. So just a little bit about the methodology of the report, how we go about researching this every year. This report is a thought leadership report. It's vendor neutral, forward looking, and very actionable. The only place you'll see the name AT&T is on the cover. And so this is about what is going to happen in the market. Where do you have to go in terms of protecting your edge ecosystem as a cybersecurity professional? How should you go about investing? How should you think about working with others and so on? So our methodology for the 2023 report is that we surveyed 1,418 participants from around the world. That includes North America, Latin America, EMEA, which includes UK, Ireland, France, and Germany, as well as APAC, which includes Australia, Singapore, South Korea, and India. We surveyed seven different vertical markets, financial services, healthcare, retail, energy and utilities, manufacturing, transportation, and U.S. SLED, state, local, and higher education. And in addition to this report, this core report, which is a hefty report, 50 pages long, if you visit my colleagues, Mark and Justin, out at our table, they also have individual vertical market reports of four of those seven verticals that we surveyed. The other three verticals will be coming out over the course of the next couple, three months. And when we surveyed people, our 1,418 survey participants, we wanted to talk to people who are in IT, who are in cybersecurity, operations, networking, and line of business. And the line of business is really important to us because the line of business is making a lot of decisions about this next generation of computing. They want to deliver better business outcomes based upon the technology that they have at their fingertips. So let's take a look at the edge ecosystem and what it means. Now, the edge is one of those words that we've found out in our research. It's an evolving word. And if you ask 10 different people what edge means, you'll probably get 12 different answers. And the answers typically will lean to the tech stack that either a vendor is selling or that somebody might be using. So for the purposes of this discussion, and as we refer to it in the report, we mean that edge is software defined, on-premise, or in the cloud. Your workloads, your applications, your hosting, it's closer to where the data is generated and consumed. And the third characteristic is that it's a distributed model of management, intelligence, and networks. And so think about what this means. This means that we're focused on the next generation of computing. It's underpinned by networks with lower latency, and higher bandwidth. Our applications are different. They're applets, if you will, that are ephemeral, headless, ma communicate machine to machine. And it's about delivering that near real-time digital first experience to that consumer, whether it's in a business to business environment or a business to consumer environment or machine to machine environment. So let's take a look at an edge use case and think about an edge use case that we've probably all encountered on our everyday lives. Think about pulling into a public parking structure. Pull into the first floor and it says there are two parking spots available. And you say, you know, not feeling very lucky. I think I'll go up to the next floor and see what's up there. You go up to the next floor, 50 parking spots available. You say, great, drive around, find the parking spot that's appropriate. That's edge computing at your service. So think about what happened. It's near real time. You didn't have to open an app to say, I want to go to the parking lot on the corner of 3rd and Maple. You didn't have to do anything. The data was just served up to you. And as a car leaves a parking spot, the number on the board increments. As a car enters a parking spot, the number on the board 
decreases. So it's that near real-time digital first experience. That's edge computing. And as you, as you start to think about it with these three characteristics, you'll start to see it all around you in your everyday lives. And we have a, a fair amount of use cases that I'll share with you today as well. So from a data perspective, what we found out is that of our 1,418 global survey participants, 57% of them say that they are either in a proof of concept mode partial implementation of an edge use case, or full implementation of an edge use case. So that edge journey is real. People are getting a lot of value out of it. Remember, it's about generating those good business outcomes from democratized computing. We also wanted to find out about the types of endpoints that people were using in this edge environment. And 48% of our survey participants came back to us and said, we're using usual suspects, tablets, phones, desktops, laptops, but 30% said we're using emerging endpoints. Think robots, think wearables for remote patient monitoring in healthcare. Think about autonomous drones, autonomous vehicles. So the endpoints are maturing, the endpoints are diversifying, they're changing. Some of those endpoints are intentional. Think about a watch for remote patient monitoring. People aren't going to have a full scale smartwatch, they're going to have something that is very purpose and intentionally built just for monitoring those at home analytics that a physician may want after surgery. So we saw a lot of diversity in endpoints. And in all of our vertical reports, we talk about what the diversity of those endpoints mean. And if you think about securing the edge, you heard my colleagues Rita and Sentil talk this morning about you know, securing the perimeter is not enough. Securing the perimeter, we've gotten away from this. The edge says that securing the edge is often circuitous. It's non-linear. You may have an endpoint Sit, uh, sensor endpoint sitting on a tractor in Des Moines, Iowa. And you want to be able to collect the data for that and share it with other farmers in the region. So you need to be able to secure all of that. So it's quite different than what we've done before. So let's take a look at the key findings from the 2023 AT&T Cybersecurity Insights Report. And anytime you do primary research like this, people want to know, what are the big aha moments that you found in the data? And so there are really three. The first is this idea of balanced investing. People always want to know how much money is being spent on security. So we took a look at where that money is being spent. The second is this notion of cross-functional communication and collaboration. It's essential. And the third is this idea of dynamic cyber resilience, making sure you understand what's coming next. So think about proactive investing. Think about where we were three, four, five years ago. With the pandemic, security moved from being a technical issue to being a business requirement. But we had to make sure that we're investing appropriately. Think about edge use cases. Think about what you want your business outcomes to be using a series of sensors, cameras, endpoints, and so on. You want to make sure that you are investing so that you can remain competitive. You want to make sure that you're investing appropriately in security as well as everything else. And we wanted to take a look also at the top use cases. So this slide shows the use cases, the top use case in each vertical between 2022 and 2023. And you can see that there is no duplication of a use case in any of these verticals between the two years. This shows that edge is growing. Organizations are finding a lot of benefit in edge computing. Our top use case this year was in the US state, local, and higher education organizations. It was building management. So smart building management, being able to do proactive maintenance, being able to understand what should be done with HVAC systems if you have a, if you have a heat wave coming in on Saturday and people are coming in on Monday morning. This idea of smart building management, using a series of sensors, using a series of information coming from weather reports and so on. Last year, the top use case was in manufacturing, and that's video-based quality inspection. So think about what that says. If you're a manufacturer, you have a series of cameras and sensors on your assembly line for whatever product you're making. At the point of a defect being inserted on that assembly line, 
the assembly line stops. And you can then say, here's where the defect was inserted. You can then take a look at some amount of products that you created before that. And what that does from a business perspective is it says, you have far less opportunity for recalls. You're probably going to put out better quality products overall. So think about some of these use cases. Teleemergency medical services. This is a really interesting one. One of the other use cases in healthcare was the use of robots to disinfect hospital rooms as well as exam rooms after a person leaves. Think about what the medical industry is going through. Every device, every endpoint that is connected to the internet has to be secured. And medical organizations are extremely aware of that. In manufacturing, smart warehousing this year in 2023 was their top use case. Their top endpoint was robots. So they're moving away from some of those usual suspects in terms of endpoints. Now when we take a look at investing, so we're seeing that over the past two years, organizations are telling us, yes, we have a lot of faith, a lot of confidence in the fact that edge computing is going to allow us to deliver those better business outcomes. And so where are we investing? So if you take a look at this table, this is really, really interesting. Overall, of their total edge budget, organizations told us that they are spending 22% of their overall total edge budget on security. They're spending 22% of their overall edge budget on applications. They're spending 30% of their overall edge budget on network. And they're spending 23% of their overall edge budget on strategy and planning. So take a look at this. You probably wouldn't have seen this three, four years ago. This means from a security perspective, security has that seat at the proverbial table. Security is not an afterthought. They're not saying, let's put these edge computing use cases into production and then see what happens. They're also looking at the application. Because as I mentioned, the applications are changing as well. We're going from very GUI-based applications, graphical user interface applications, to these headless types of applications that are ephemeral, come together as needed. So the idea that applications are being built into this overall budgeting process is really great. 30% is being spent on network, and 23% on strategy and planning. So when you look at this, it starts to look like a very holistic picture. And what we also found out is that the idea of communicating and collaborating cross-functionally with different teams inside the organization, as well as with those outside trusted third-party advisors who have done this before, is really critical. Organizations know that the outcomes matter. And that if they're not communicating internally, you're going to have problems. And this is something the industry has been saying for the past probably two decades, that we need more cross-functional internal communication and collaboration. And edge computing is what's driving it because of the business outcomes that organizations want to achieve. So we found out that once organizations have an edge computing use case, and they go into production with it, full production or partial production, 71% of them bring in that trusted external third party advisor. They tell us that breaking down those silos that have existed for the past four, five plus decades is really critical. But they also say bringing in a trusted third party advisor, such as cybersecurity consulting, managed security services, global systems integrator, a telco to help with ne network selection. They tell us that this is critical to the success of their edge computing use cases. So working with that trusted advisor is really important. And we also found out that organizations are saying, you know what, we're building these edge computing use cases and we don't want to do it in a silo. So we're working with trusted advisors, we're working across sort of different functional teams inside. We're we're allocating budget for it, but we also want to make sure that in the event of some unforeseen accident, such as a natural accident or something that is cyber made, some sort of breach, they want to be able to continue with business as usual. These edge computing use cases are so important that continuing with business as usual is really critical for them. So this idea of building cyber resilience in really matters. It's a matter of future proofing, 
and understanding what your potential attack types are, where people are going to attack, how they're going to attack, and so on. And this is my favorite table, my favorite bit of data from 2023. And what this shows us is where organizations who are creating and developing edge use cases, where they perceive the most likely attacks. So the question we asked for this was, on a scale of one to five, five being the highest, one being the lowest, tell us which of these attack types you perceive that will happen most frequently to your edge computing use cases. And the way we read this, it's a heat map. On the y-axis, the vertical axis, we have the different attack types. So DDoS, business email compromise, personal information exfiltration, phishing, insider threat, account takeover, nation state cyber attacks, and ransomware. Those are the type of attacks that organizations are concerned about. Across the top, on the x-axis, we have the total, that's the gray bar, that's in aggregate. And then we have the seven different verticals that we surveyed. Finance, healthcare, retail, manufacturing, energy and utilities, transportation, and US state, local, and higher education. So of all these different attack types, of those eight different attack types, DDoS comes out as the attack type that our 1,418 survey participants are most concerned about. It's 3.03 out of five. And a lot of people look at this slide and they say, how can that be? I don't believe you. I don't believe that DDoS is the number one attack. And this is what our survey told us. This is what our survey data told us. Ransomware is number eight out of eight. But if you look at the slide, it's all blue. So there's not one industry out there who's saying, yeah, we're not concerned about personal information exfiltration, or we're not concerned about ransomware. They're all concerned. It's just to different varying degrees. And if we take a look at this, it's a heat map. So the darker the blue, the higher the number. If we take a look at financial services, for example, their top concern is business email compromise. If we go over to manufacturing, their top concern is DDoS. So these are the attack types that people are most concerned about. So let's talk a little bit about why DDoS came back as the number one attack type. When we got this data back, we looked at it and we said, no, it must be wrong. Let's go back and take a look at it again because that just doesn't make sense. 2021 was the year of ransomware. We've seen nothing but ransomware increases. Organizations gearing up for ransomware, taking, taking classes, doing everything they can to increase their personal hygiene, but yet DDoS came back as number one. And if you think about what's going on with edge computing, where we're seeing edge computing use cases, we're seeing a lot of industrial IoT, IoT, operational technology. So we see a lot of endpoints out there, sensors, cameras, valves, and so on. So think about this. If the adversary can take down a manufacturing environment or a hospital with all of those endpoints, they can then act in tandem. Let's say they take a manufacturing facility down or a hospital down for 35, 40 minutes. They can then act in tandem and start to go into the network, drop some type of malware, and before you know it, you have ransomware attacks. So this is indicative of the fact that the adversaries, they continue to pivot, they continue to follow current events, they understand what's going on, they understand how computing is evolving. We're democratizing our computing by including more and more endpoints. So it's the ever-changing way of thinking about cybersecurity. And our key takeaways are you need to be vigilant with your edge computing use cases. And this is a great slide because what it does is it shows us each vertical market and the percentage that have at least one use case implemented. And then the primary use case the top endpoint that they're concerned about protecting, and then the top attack type that, they, that they're perceiving. So we can see that US SLED, US state, local, and higher education, 66% of those survey participants who said, yes, we are US SLED customers, we are US SLED organizations, they're saying that they have at least one fully implemented edge computing use case in, in production, and that is most likely building management. Their top concern 
mobile devices, the usual suspects. But their biggest attack that they're concerned about is personal information exfiltration. Yet if we look at something such as manufacturing, 46% of our manufacturing survey participants are concerned about smart, or, smart warehousing is their primary use case, and they're concerned about DDoS with their top endpoint being robots. So this is a really great slide, along with this previous one of the table where the attack types are, to take back to your organization. Inside of your own organizations, have the conversation. You know, if you're a financial services organization, are you prepared for personal email exfiltration? Or if you're a manufacturing organization, are you using robots? Are you protecting those robots? Are you concerned about DDoS attacks? So use these. Go back to your own organization and start the conversation with them. Some key takeaways for how to get started with edge computing use cases. Begin with the end in mind. Understand what you want to do. Remember, you need to collaborate and communicate cross-functionally. So work with your line of business partners. Figure out what you want to do with edge computing and begin from there. Start with the end in mind. Develop that investment strategy. Make sure that you're looking at security, applications, the network, strategy and planning. And then collaborate. Collaborate internally among your own organizations and then work with that trusted third party advisor, whether it is cybersecurity consulting, managed security services, a telco for the network, global systems integrator. Bring in those third parties who have done this before because this is the next generation of computing and it's completely different from what we have done in the past. And then make sure that you are building resilience into those edge computing use cases that you have. And start with your, with, start with your, with your edge computing use cases in mind and go from there. And please do stop by our booth and pick up a copy of the report. And we, as I mentioned, we also have those vertical reports out there as well. So we have a little bit of time left. And so do we have any questions? We do. We okay. do. Uh, and we're going to come to the audience too, so you guys get ready. <laughs> How does the perceived attack list compare with data from 2022 to this year? Uh, that must be somebody who read the report in 2022 <laughs> as well as 2023. <laughs> In 2022, it was a complete inverse. So ransomware was number one. DDoS was the last attack type that they were concerned with. This year, DDoS is first, ransomware is last. And as I mentioned, when we got that data back, we were really surprised that DDoS was number one. And as we were reading through older reports, back in 2021, we had a sentence in our report in 2021 that said, DDoS attacks are going to become a factor as edge use cases mature. And we thought, wow, you know, two years ago, we were talking about that. Back in 2021, we were talking about that. So while we were totally surprised, and I think most audiences are surprised when they hear that DDoS is the number one perceived attack in 2023, if you look at the way edge computing is changing the computing landscape, it makes perfect sense. Crowd, audience here. Any questions? We have a question there and a question up here. So I just happened to notice in the report it talks about the fact that yes, DDoS is at the top of the list, but that the perceived benefit of mitigating DDoS is low. And I'm wondering if you can say a bit about that. Yeah, that's a really awesome observation. So if you read in the report, we have a table that shows uh, the, the, the perceived cost benefit of implementing different cybersecurity controls. DDoS is dead last. Yet, on the next page, we say DDoS is the number one attack concern. So we looked at that and we scratched our heads and said, what in the world is going on? And if you think about the way the cybersecurity controls are listed in that table, and it is table, uh, it's figure 10. It's figure 10 inside the report. If you look at the way the cybersecurity controls, is it? <laughs> if you look at the way the cybersecurity controls are listed inside of that report, figure 10, um, figure 10 shows us pretty much a standard way of thinking, a legacy way of thinking. We're concerned about client server. We're concerned about web apps, mobile apps, 
cloud apps, they hadn't yet kind of figured out what their edge computing concerns were going to be. So we said, this is sort of a legacy way of thinking because what we also found out, and there's another table inside the report, that says that the more edge use cases an organization has, the more cybersecurity controls they're going to implement. So when they just have one edge use case, they say, well, cybersecurity controls, eh, not really that important. But as they start to roll these, uh, these edge use cases out, as they start to bring in more edge use cases, cybersecurity controls suddenly become more important. And so that brings us to DDoS as the number one attack concern. So we're going from a legacy way of thinking to sort of a more modern way of thinking. That's the way we interpreted that data. And surprisingly, in 2022, DDoS again, in terms of cost benefit analysis was dead last. But DDoS was last in the attack type in 2022. 2023, they're saying not too important to invest in because I think it's almost like an insurance policy kind of runs in the background. And you know, you can still overwhelm uh, all the DDoS defenses that you might have in the world if the attack is big enough. We've seen that with a large software development platform where they had really great DDoS protection but yet the attack was so big, it overwhelmed the platform. So it's, and we'll start to see this again, um, moving from more of a legacy way of thinking to a more modern way of thinking. We have, so thank you for bringing that up. We have one more question. Yeah. Yeah, so to completely beat the DDoS topic to absolute <laughs> death, um, one more question related. Um, uh, and I'm curious if the topic might have been a bit broad for a survey. It might have contributed to, to kind of misleading result, just because it, I'm wondering if the smoke screen analogy that you mentioned before, how the DDoS attack launches to kind of pull the SOC attention to then kind of plant the malware and maybe get a little further with the malware attack. Um, I'm wondering how much of that was the concern and then also, if you're talking about edge computing, how much of the current concern would be their devices contributing to the botnet that launches attacks into the into the space? You know, leading yeah. to kind of a kind of a miscued yep. you know recognition of that topic. Yeah, and those are both really really excellent points. And you obviously can't sit there and <laughs> handhold every 1,418 people who are taking the survey, but I think those are really good points. But um, the fact that DDoS was perceived as low cost benefit two years in a row really leads us to believe that it is this legacy way of thinking moving into a more modern way of thinking with edge computing and, and where we're going there. And I don't think that most people have necessarily gotten to the point where they're saying, oh, my device is going to launch some type of attack against me. We, asked, we did ask that question, and I don't think most people said, Yes, we believe that that's going to be the case. But those are excellent points. Thank you. That's it. All right. Thank you so much.